Hi, hi, Stim. It's nice to see you this morning, and it's great to have you here in Germany. Um, we had our national parliamentary elections yesterday. How did you find the proceedings in Germany, and how did they compare to the proceedings that you had in your first free elections in Tunisia? The main difference is uh, that uh, I found that uh, um, everybody is respectful for their democracy, so that's why you don't really need observers. So um, uh, the uh, the personnel uh, uh, managing the election process and the people who were there in charge of the uh, poll station and the uh, citizens uh, were all respectful of democracy, which is not the case in Tunisia. Because uh, in Tunisia, uh, everybody tries to trick, to cheat mm -hmm. the democracy in every possible way. So, um, I mean, we spent the whole summer after the revelations around the, let's say, totalitarian surveillance systems of NSA and other secret services. Why is it that people don't seem to care about their civil rights and the internet, seeing the outcomes of the elections yesterday and everything that happened over the summer? Uh, I think people don't care because uh, it doesn't uh, really uh, touch them emotionally. And the, the, there is no face for what NSA is doing. There is no, n n not uh, somebody that has been hurt other than Snowden, for example. Uh, that we could provide as uh, with 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 the scars on his face for to to represent what it is to be uh, uh, attacked or, or 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 handled by this system of total surveillance surveillance. I read an article by Samir recently that just reflected on the role that Manning played and the whole. Um, yeah, the whole leaking of that information for the Tunisian Revolution, kind of like a background piece on that and how important whistleblowers are for democracy. Is there any effort to bring in actions like that in Tunisia or to sort of show people the direct correlation between the importance of these kind of actions and the building of a democracy the way you're trying to do it? Uh, actually, there is there were a lot of leaks since the revolution in Tunisia, including very major uh, leaks that got Nawet, which is uh, the uh, NGO uh, uh, for which works uh, SEMI. Um, for example, like a few months ago, uh, before uh, you know that there, there were two political killings in Tunisia yeah. uh, in a few months, uh, two political, uh, less political figures got killed <coughs> by the Islamists because it's public uh, information given now by the Islamists themselves. Uh, uh, before that, those facts, uh, Nawet got leaks from the police itself of videos of people from the ruling pa uh, party telling, I will kill that guy. Wow. Okay. Mm. So we got very high level leaks, but the problem in the situations uh, uh, like we are uh, in Tunisia is like it looks like nothing uh, uh, really matters because we have maybe too much leaks. I don't know, but there are too much things happening uh, to the point that even a killing of uh, a person, okay, so there were a huge. I was going to say there were protests, right? People stuff. did go out on the street yeah. over this. And st till now, people are asking the government to resign. Uh, uh, they go to the streets, etc. Uh, but when you are not uh, ready to use violence against the government, mm -hmm. at some point, uh, you have no options. Is that so we've been demonstrating for, 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 for months now against that government and nothing happens. So what options we have? So this is the, the, the reflections we're in right now. You said earlier that um, looking at Germany, what we have, what gives a lot of stability to our democracy is, you know, an elder generation of people that 
realize its value and treat it with a lot of respect. Now, looking at Tunisia, would you say that that is the opposite in your case, that you have a generational conflict? And because you have a generation of people who are who are brought up in the old system and that's all they know, have that mindset and it's hard to get out of it? Yeah, uh, you, it's the exact situation we're in. And the problem is uh, uh, a system, uh, when the system is a monster, it creates its own counterparts and it's a monster too. Uh, so uh, uh, it's a difficult situation because uh, uh, those people have been fighting that monster for years. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've become the, uh, another monster. Uh, there is a practical problem of their networks being completely infiltrated mm -hmm. by the same political police that was there before. And nobody is talking about this issue. Everybody knows that they are completely infiltrated, they've been infiltrated for years. And that same political police, that same, uh, uh, which is the, 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 the arm of the monster, which is doing uh, the bad things, is still more or less ruling the country. And the, 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 the more we advance in time, the more people just forget a little bit more about what they did, the more they get more powerful again. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, they, 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 um, they, 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 we took them down simply by removing fear, by, by uh, having people realize we don't fear them anymore. And the police simply at, at some moment was fearing the people in the streets. You know, they were giving back their, their weapons to, to the army. And that situation is changing again. And those guys are the, the guys who are infiltrating every possible aspect of the, op of the now government and before it was the so opposition. So you basically have the same power structures underlying and undermining the new system you're trying to build up that were in place before, un pretty much unbroken by the revolution, um, because those power structures it's were really wrong. strong. They yeah. kind of just, you know, hid for a while and are resurfacing. How, how can that system that is so, in, you know, that's a system that's very hard to break? It's not enough to say, okay, we just uh, give uh, um, uh, the, the, the monopoly for the violence, like everybody does, to the police. No, police is corrupted. Okay, and they have the weapons. And you have to take care of that situation and to acknowledge it and to, to build a strategy against it. Uh, and uh, this was illustrated uh, uh, at one event. You know, we had a, a minister of the, uh, an interior minister, which was in charge of the police, that was put there after the revolution. And he was um, a leftist guy. And he decided very, he decided basically to fire everyone that was suspect at mm -hmm. the interior ministry. Uh, do you know what happened? They at the, 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 the police attacked him with weapons. Okay. So at this moment you realize that it's really the guy who has the weapon in him who rules. It's not the minister. It's not the, uh, the, the, the directors or the stakeholders. It's really the guy over there. And then you realize you have to manage that fact and to manage the, void, the violence in itself and to have solutions for that. So how does then the power interplay between your police system and your army system come into the equation? Uh, so they are, uh, of course, um, uh, not uh, the same system. It's a different system, which is a good thing. Uh, but... Um, no one of them is really um, <coughs> under uh, the control of the people, of the citizens. And this is the main problem. So you could say, okay, why not build a third 
force that is under the control of the citizen. The, the European answer would be to, you know, disarm and <laughs> and, to, and reinstate the rule of law. And the American, U.S. American answer, and this is very placative, I realize, would be to arm the citizens and fight your powers back. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, not really, because uh, at this game, everybody uh, loses. And mm. we, uh, we know that. So... Um, I, I think the, the, the solution is really to build a new institution for, um, because it's impo the police is impossible to reform. Right. Yeah, we have been trying for two years. So you need a new institution and you need a, a process to build new security institutions. We need to disintegrate the security process. So build small institutions in charge of very specific tasks. So like a decentralized security system, yes. which is a completely not, new system, not based but, on any of the old structures and not any of the people in charge of it now? Because the problem is that there is a concentration of power in one hand. It's the same problem that we, uh, that's uh, in uh, the... In the U.S., with regards to the NSA, uh, I mean, uh, it's always the same problem. It, the power tries to agglomerate itself every, uh, every every time it can, and you have to have processes and vigilance to disintegrate it every time you can. So this is the uh, uh, the solution, I think, for Tunisia. Actually, the real problem is we don't want to go to violence. If we wanted to go to violence, uh, there will be uh, solutions, there will be things that we could ask. But in the situation we are now, uh, I think there are no, uh, no real solutions because we, we're taking the, the longest road. So we'll see in the, uh, in the future what happens. Hope uh, it will be a long and winding road to a bright future. Thank you very much for coming to chat with me. Thank you.